G'day and welcome to worship today. Today we celebrate the ascension of Jesus. Jesus led the disciples out to Bethany, a little way out of Jerusalem. Well, I'm here at North Shields, a little way out of Port Lincoln. And this is the North Shields Cemetery. The ascension is an important part of the story of Jesus. He's not dead. We don't have a grave to visit that has claimed him. He is alive. He's alive today and lives to intercede for us. He's alive today and is with us through his spirit. It looked like he was leaving the disciples, but that wasn't really the story as we will reflect on today. Sometimes we may feel like Jesus has left us to our own devices. The truth of the ascension reminds us that Jesus hasn't left us to our own devices, but is with us to lead and guide us. We can trust in him. God bless you as you worship him today. God's name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Psalm 47 we read, Clap your hands for joy, all peoples. Praise God with loud songs. God sits on his sacred throne. He rules over the nations. We don't always acknowledge God as the ruler of our lives. We have a tendency to put ourselves on the throne that belongs to God. So let's come today to ask our Father to forgive our sins because Jesus Christ is our Lord who has died, risen and ascended for us. Please join me in this prayer of repentance. Lord Jesus Christ, crucified, risen and ascended for us, we have not loved you as our Redeemer or obeyed you as our Lord. We have not brought our prayers to you or heeded your tears shed over the world. Forgive us, we pray. Breathe into us a new spirit of service and make us joyfully obedient to do your will. For your glory's sake. Amen. Well, God has had mercy on us. He loves us and has given his son to die for us. The good news is that God forgives because of all that Jesus has done, completed now that he has ascended to his Father in heaven. By the authority that the risen Lord and the ascended Lord has given to his church, I declare you absolved. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's peace be with you. Live as God's forgiven people in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear from Pastor Phil. I can't see you, so you can't see me. Hi. Hey, um, have you ever played hide and seek with someone? I know I played hide and seek with my grandson, um, my oldest grandson, many years ago. And he thought that if he had his eyes, hands over his eyes, then you could, he, because he couldn't see you, you couldn't see him. And I was wondering about that because today we're remembering Ascension Day, the day that Jesus um, left the planet. So we couldn't see him anymore. And I wondered whether sometimes we might go, well, if I can't see Jesus, does that mean he can't see me? And I think, I don't think that's true at all. The Bible reminds us that Jesus does see us and he continues to care for us. And I was thinking about it too. Um, so when I think about it, even if I can't see Jesus, that doesn't mean he can't see me and he doesn't care. Because I'm reminded all the time when I look at the cross, 
that Jesus does care enough to die for me, to die for us. And if I look over this way, then I can see the, um, the baptismal font. And that's a reminder that God cares for us so much that he wants us to be part of his family. That's why he makes us his children in baptism. So um, maybe you might go, well, I can't see Jesus. I can't see God. What does that mean? Does it mean they don't care, they can't see me? Well, they can, and they do care. Just because you can't see me doesn't mean that I'm not thinking of you. Just because we can't see God doesn't mean that he's not thinking of us and caring for us. Our Gospel for today is written in Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 53, where Jesus commissions and blesses the disciples. Then he said to them, These are the very things I told you about while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the writings of the prophets and the Psalms had to come true. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, This is what is written, The Messiah must suffer and must rise from death three days later. And in his name the message about repented, repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and I myself will send upon you what my Father has promised. But you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. Then he led them out of the city as far as Bethany, where he raised his hands and blessed them. As he was blessing them, he departed from them and was taken up into heaven. They worshipped him and went back into Jerusalem, filled with great joy, and spent all their time in the temple giving thanks to God. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for fulfilling the scriptures and returning to the Father. Fill us with the joy of your continual presence. Amen. We declare our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. I grew up with a TV show, Batman. I don't mean the later movies, I mean the 1960s Batman starring Adam West. Batman was great, but one thing I didn't like was the way things would be left dangling. Batman and Robin are tied to a bench with thick coils of rope slowly being fed towards a big circular buzzsaw that will surely cut them in half. The voiceover comes on and says something like, Is this the end for the dynamic duo? Will they end up with a buzz cut? Tune in next week, same bat time, same bat channel. And then the message comes up on the screen, to be continued. And my 10 year old self is left wondering, what's going to happen? Of course they won't be killed, they never do get killed. It's only halfway through the series anyway. But they surely can't escape from this. Come on, you can't leave me hanging like this. But they do. And I have a week to think about how Batman will get out of it in the next part of the story. How he will escape 
and not only escape but defeat the supervillain. Well, welcome to the world of the disciples on Ascension Day. It's 40 days after Easter and during this time Jesus has been with his disciples teaching them, feeding them, figuratively and literally, and spending time with them. And now it's time for Jesus to go. He takes them out to Bethany and ascends into heaven. And the disciples are left wondering, what's going on? Jesus said something about the Holy Spirit coming and us being witnesses and that he would come back, but what now? Surely it's going to work out somehow, but we have no idea what's going to happen next. What's it going to be like? That's as if a great big to be continued banner flashes across the sky as Jesus disappears into the clouds. I have a sneaking suspicion that most of us don't like to be continued messages. We like to know what's going on. We want to know where things are heading. That way we feel like we are in control. We don't like things hanging. We don't like unresolved questions. We like closure, certainty, resolution. Maybe that's what causes us so much angst in this COVID-19 world. We feel out of control and uncertain about what's next. When will we get back to normal? Or has our world changed forever? When can we get back to church? What's going to happen to the economy? All these questions make us feel a little bit out of control. We just know they won't resolve as easily as Batman's predicament in the next episode. And so the disciples are left hanging. What was Jesus talking about? When would he come again? When would the disciples get this power from God that Jesus spoke about? And how will that happen? And how will this power help them? And what does it mean to be a witness? These and many other questions will be answered in the next exciting episode. You see, Ascension is partly a festival which celebrates to be continued. It reminds us that faith isn't about knowing all the answers. Sure, we know some of the answers. After all, next week we'll be celebrating Pentecost. There, the next episode about the gift of the Holy Spirit is played out. The disciples are empowered and enabled to proclaim God's mighty deeds through Jesus. And through the Holy Spirit, the church will grow and spread. The story of Acts is the story of the spread of the church. That's people, not buildings, in Jerusalem in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. For those first disciples didn't know everything, and we sure don't know everything either. There are to be continued messages in our lives too. There are to be continued messages in your personal life, and also in our life together as the people of God. There's been a bit of talk about what the church might look like post-COVID-19. What have we learnt during this period of isolation and reconnecting? How will we do church as things open up again? The reason we wonder these things is that we don't know the future. But some things we do know by faith. We know that God speaks to us and encourages us and gives us his grace through his word and the sacraments. We know that Jesus promises to be with us to the end of the age. We know that God has called his people together to reflect his love. But we want to grow in understanding what it is that God is calling us to at this time and in this place. Jesus' ascension reminds us that we need to place our faith and our trust in him. Jesus left his disciples with just a word of promise. Go to Jerusalem, I'll send the Holy Spirit. Well, how did the disciples respond? We're told in Luke that they went back to Jerusalem filled with joy 
spending all their time in the temple giving thanks to God. They responded with praise and worship. Despite their fear of the unknown, their need to be in control, their questions and their uncertainty, they responded in faith. Those early disciples teach us that despite our questions and our uncertainties, faith in Jesus' promises are what will continue to give us joy. So when we're faced with a to-be-continued moment in our lives, we can respond in faith. And our faith is in Jesus. We can rely on him even though life is tough and everything's up in the air, and we just know, don't know what's going on. At times like this, faith is crucial. Ascension is a reminder to retain hope even when life is a question mark. The disciples didn't stand on the mountain and mourn Jesus' departure. They didn't get angry and shake their fists at God. They didn't despair. They trusted they trusted the promises that Jesus made. They moved through their uncertainty and fear into a place of trust and faith. They supported each other and prayed for God's will to be done in them. A couple of years ago, our bishop, Pastor John Henderson, wrote some reflections on Ascension as the key to mission in his column in the Lutheran magazine. Here are some thoughts from that article. Ascension shows not only who Jesus truly is, but also that the church's mission is actually the mission of Jesus today. Jesus ascended into heaven so that he could continue his mission through his believers, through his church. To be continued. It's the joyous mission that Jesus embarked on that is to continue. And you and I get to be a part of that. Pastor John continues. Understanding mission from the vantage point of ascension helps us to avoid some common pitfalls. For instance, mission isn't continually thinking up new strategies to attract people to church. That approach comes from the law, not the gospel. And it can easily be a guilt trip. The temptation to do mission as a good work that earns praise or because we fear declining membership is self-defeating. We want to show people Jesus, not ourselves or our church, just so that we can be proud of it. Our mission then is simply to join him and other believers in the gospel work that he's already doing. I find those thoughts very liberating. They free me from trusting in my own works to trust in Jesus. To paraphrase Pastor John's final point, mission is seeing what God is up to and joining in. It's far more important to see what God is up to than to imagine how we might somehow drive the mission of the church. Ascension means that we are not left to our own devices to dream up the next chapter. There is uncertainty, but in the middle of that uncertainty, we can trust that Jesus is with us. Someone a lot wiser than me once said, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. How will you respond to the to be continued messages slapped up on the screen of your life. Maybe they'll be a reminder of the importance of trusting in Jesus. How will you respond when the way ahead seems foggy or scary or uncertain? Will you give up hope? Or cling all the more tightly in faith to Jesus? Will you bemoan the feeling of being out of control or trust all the more in the one who is in control? 
Will you try to solve everything in your time? Or wait on God, the Lord of time and eternity? When to be continued messages flash up in your life, respond like those first disciples, in hope and faith, in praise and worship. It's the best way to wait for the next exciting episode in our journey with Jesus. God bless you, God be with you as you wait on the Lord in faith. Let's pray. Lord, give us faith in those to be continued times in our lives. Give us faith to trust you, praise you, and put our hope in you. Amen. As we come to bring our prayers to God today, we acknowledge the gifts God gives and ask Him to guide us as we use them in His service. We pray. Living God, your Son Jesus Christ at His ascension gave gifts to His church. Lead us as members of His body on earth to use the gifts we have received to do your will. Amen. Our Lord and brother Jesus Christ has been raised to the right hand of God. Let's pray to him that he would intercede for us and for all the world before our Father in heaven. We pray. Mighty God, we pray for those who exercise authority in our country especially our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, and all those involved in federal, state and local levels of government. Strengthen them in difficult times and help them to make good decisions for the benefit of all. Gracious God, we pray for those caught in sin, that they may know the freedom which forgiveness brings. Help us to share your love with a world in desperate need of your grace and forgiveness. <clears throat> Just and merciful God, we pray for the release of captives, especially those unfairly imprisoned, and for lands ruled by oppressive regimes. Let your peace and freedom reign. Compassionate God, we pray for justice for the poor and give thanks for a society which makes provision for people in difficult circumstances. Be with those facing unemployment and all kinds of hardships in our society. Give us eyes to see and hearts to care for them. Loving God, we especially pray for those who bear intolerable burdens of illness, grief or anxiety, especially in this time of COVID-19. Bring healing, comfort and peace. Bless all those who care for the sick. Lord Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, you ascended into heaven to your Father and our Father, to your God and our God. Always remember us and never cease to represent our cause before the throne of God with whom you live and reign with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. May God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you and care for you, and within you to fill you with his life, love, peace and uncontainable joy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen.